Well, thanks for joining us here on your Friday on the 208. We've made it through the week. A major conversation this week centered on comments made by a Boise State professor, academic freedom, and the First Amendment. We dug into a lot of this this week on the 208. Boise State professor Dr. Scott Yenner drew local and national attention after his comments on feminism at a conference out of town recently. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But first, we wanted to circle back to a word that you might have heard a few times this week, and the word is tenure and tenure at a university by definition is the right to keep a job, especially the job of being a professor at a college or university for as long as you want to have it. There is, of course, not unique to Boise State. Boise State has tenure just like almost every other university in our country. And there's a process that academics go through to earn tenure. And it's not as simple as just ticking off some requirements. No, a panel of academic peers as well as administrators, they review several areas of consideration like performance in the classroom and research quality as well as conduct. It's a big deal when an academic earns tenure. You'll usually see a large party to celebrate their large accomplishment. It's been pointed out this week that Dr. Yenner, he is tenured at Boise State, which some assumed meant that there are no rules that apply to Dr. Yenner. It's important for us to state this. That statement is not true. Tenure does not make someone exempt from school rules, policies, or the law. It does, however, protect people like college professors from certain consequences after publishing academic research or speaking at a conference, for example. This afternoon, I spoke with Boise State Provost John Buckwalter about tenure and the value of it at places like Boise State. And to be very clear here, the disclaimer, the conversation you're about to hear is speaking in general terms. Boise State tells us they cannot comment on personnel matters like calls for Dr. Yenner to be investigated for his comments on women and feminism. In terms of academic freedom and research, what do you think the benefits of tenure are in concert with that? I think it allows investigators to maybe approach topics um, that maybe they wouldn't approach before. And uh, people tend to concentrate on the controversial nature. But I, I think it's just as likely that um, you, you might decide you want to investigate something that's not quite as much of a sure thing, so to speak, that you're not quite sure what you're going to find out when you run those experiments. And if you end up with um, a whole lot of nothing, the penalty for that as a junior investigator can be much more severe than uh, a, um, a more senior uh, investigator because their more senior investigator already has built their academic re reputation within the scientific community. And so they don't, they, they can, they can afford um, some things that don't work out in ways that maybe junior investigators can't. Tenure doesn't provide uh, any faculty member at Boise State or any other institution around the country just carte blanche to do whatever they want. Um, there are, you know, certainly um, examples um, at other uh, institutions. I think uh, if you go to the Chronicle of Art Education, you can see an institution in Florida, I think, that just uh, let a, uh, some tenured faculty go for a variety of reasons. Reasons. And so I think this, there is a misconception that just because you're clean, that um, you can do whatever you want. And that's certainly not true. Uh, what do you think the value of tenure is? Well, I, I think um, one of the things you have to, to recognize, it's sort of an industry standard at this point. And so when you, um, when you think of a university, um, tenure is something that um, is a pretty standard accepted practice. And so I think if you were to approach it where you didn't have tenure, you would probably um, have a much more difficult time recruiting top talent to uh, a place like Boise State if, if you didn't have tenure. And so from that aspect, I think it's a, um, a, a, a recruitment and retention tool. A lot of conversation in our community about this, many wondering if Dr. Yenner is now under investigation by Boise State or an independent investigator or if he's immune from that because of tenure. You're not immune from things because you have tenure, as we just talked about. But in terms of questions about an investigation at Boise State, here's what we can say to answer that. We really don't know because, again, Boise State tells us they cannot comment on issues like this because it is a personnel matter. They do tell us, though, in a statement, quote, that the university takes allegations of policy violations seriously and investigates them under the appropriate policy. 
So an investigation into a tenured professor, hypothetically, is a very involved process, according to the provost Buckwalter, who you just heard from. And they take that issue, like academic freedom and having conversations in the classroom, as well as the First Amendment, they take all of that very seriously. So if you are watching closely to see something develop very soon, you may be disappointed. This is going to be a watch and wait situation as the significant process does happen or does not happen, depending on the personnel matter.